So gas goes in here and electricity goes in here. And if you like, you can plug in here and that's a fully metal charge door cover. Nice little extra touch of toughness there. This is the Wrangler Willys 4xe. That is a plug-in hybrid engine, which means that we have two power sources, a tank of gas and a battery full of electricity. In this type of hybrid, plugging into charge is never mandatory. As long as there's gas in your tank, you're good to drive. So let's learn all about it. Hey Justin, would you like to sh like to show us your willy? <laughs> What's wrong? I'm just asking Justin if I can see his willy, and there it is. Are you ready for eight minutes of willy action? <laughs> All Wrangler models are built in Toledo, Ohio. The model I'm driving today is the Willys, finished in a paint color called High Velocity. And the Willys package includes larger tires, more ground clearance, higher fender flares, and both hardware and software for improved traction. As well as a four-wheel drive system with low range and auto settings and rear axle lock at the flick of a switch, that's all located down here. So we've got two-wheel drive high here, uh, four-wheel drive high auto is just a pull down there. Four wheel drive high part time is just a tap over to the right. And then four low is a tug all the way down here. Rear axle locker located right down here if we need it. Uh, just give that a little tap. And everything referenced nicely for you up there on the screen. The Jeep Wrangler 4xE is a plug-in hybrid. It's got the Wrangler's standard two liter four cylinder turbo engine, eight speed automatic and four x four transfer case with Dana axles and a rear locker in the case of this Willys tester. But the engine's starter and alternator are replaced with a motor generator that does the jobs of both, but also generates a lot of its own electricity and uses that electricity to give the gas engine a power boost. There's a second of these motor generators inside of the eight speed automatic transmission, basically replacing the torque converter. It's like adding two electric superchargers to the driveline, sufficient to bring output up to 375 horsepower. That's 5.7 liter Hemi V8 territory, and also, you get a very mighty 470 pounds of torque. That's just as much as the SRT tuned V8 from the Wrangler Rubicon 392. So the 4xE engine sends this machine down the road in a serious hurry, but when it comes to handling, steering, and braking, just remember this is more of an off-roader you can drive on the street, and not vice versa. To me, the big value of the 4xE system is how much more responsive it is from very light and gentle throttle inputs, and the electric motor torque amplified by using low range makes this thing feel like it could pull down a tree without making a peep. So in this machine they've used electrification alongside and not in place of existing axles and other hardware, meaning you've got full four-wheel drive functionality including four-wheel auto and low range, even during all-electric driving where actually the eight-speed automatic transmission still shifts gears even when the gas engine is off. So at the heart of it all, it's the same engine and four-wheel drive system you're used to. The idea is you've got full off-road functionality, no compromised attraction or clearance, and the ability to enjoy gas-free driving for most of your shorter trips, reserving fuel use for the longer ones. And of course, in this type of hybrid, plugging in is never mandatory, and as long as there's gas in the tank, you're good to drive. But when you do plug this in to recharge the battery, which is an overnight job on a 120 volt standard household outlet or just a couple of hours if you've got a level 2 charger, you're able to store enough electricity in that battery to handle 30 or 40 kilometers of driving before the fuel pump even has to turn on. I really started appreciating this when doing my daily round trip drive to the gym about 20 kilometers using no gas, or a 27 kilometer round trip for some shopping, also no gas required. Just running out to pick up some shawarma for dinner, same thing. Gas gauge doesn't move. So shorter drives stop using gasoline, and if you do a lot of them, and to charge up at home and maybe at work as well, that means your gas gauge stays parked on a lot of your drives, which could mean going to the gas station a few times a year instead of a few times a month. Compared to the non-hybrid version of this engine, the plug-in hybrid actually uses slightly more fuel when it has to use fuel. The difference is minimal, really about $5 per month, but still a disadvantage when most plug-in hybrids are notably more efficient than their non-hybrid counterparts. From a fuel saving perspective, you're getting the most return on your investment in this 4xE system if you're primarily doing a lot of shorter distance drives, and especially in stop and go traffic, where electrified powertrains like this one tend to be the most efficient. 
Electric drive lines are also more efficient when it's warm outside. The coldest days in northern Ontario's winters are challenging for all batteries that live outside, and I'd expect the range of just under 40 kilometers I was experiencing around the freezing mark to fall to 20 or 25 kilometers pretty quickly if it was 20 or 25 degrees below. There are benefits to this powertrain aside from just the fuel savings, and if you're a long-time Jeep Wrangler driver, then I think you'll find this 4xe system will give you some new experiences that you've never had in a Jeep Wrangler before. But also, if you're a long-time hybrid driver, it'll also give you some new experiences that you've never had in a plug-in hybrid before either. All right, so a little bit subtle to demonstrate this on camera, but let me see if I can show you the difference here. We've got maximum regeneration turned off right now. You should see me lifting my foot from the accelerator. And as I do that, watch the scenery outside, and you'll notice that we're not really slowing down that fast. We're just coasting. And that's exactly what you would expect in a regular car when you take your foot off of that gas pedal. We're just slowing down slowly. And now with maximum regeneration turned on, which is just that button press here, I'll do the exact same thing. Watch me lift my foot from the accelerator. Now watch the scenery outside. Notice that we're slowing down more quickly this time. It feels like the brakes are on a little bit. You probably see my torso getting a little shove out of my seat. We're down almost to a stop now. This isn't true one pedal driving because it won't bring us to rest, but it will bring us down to about five kilometers per hour, just a slow creep. If we wanna actually fully stop the vehicle, uh, then we're gonna press the brake pedal like that. Now, when we're slowing down using maximum regeneration mode, what's actually doing the slowing us down here is not the pads and rotors, but the negative torque from those electric motor generators. In this situation, we've got the momentum of the wheels, but they're not being powered. And so that spinning action of the wheels is actually driving the motor generators instead of vice versa. In the process, we're creating electricity, we're resisting the forward momentum of the vehicle, slowing us down without using the pads and rotors. And the more that you can use that regenerative braking in your day-to-day -day driving, the more you're gonna recharge the battery, the more fuel that you're going to save. By the way, that is exactly why electrified powertrains like this one tend to be the most fuel efficient in stop and go driving in the city rather than on the highway. Because every time we slow down or stop, we're actually adding a little bit of go back into that battery. It's not true one pedal driving since you still need to press and hold the brakes to bring the vehicle to rest. From the driver's seat, once you get into the rhythm and start timing your stops properly, almost all of your day-to-day -day braking can be handled 100% electrically, and your right foot will feel like it's on vacation since it can accelerate and brake using just a little more or less pressure on a single pedal. This makes the drive much less labor-intensive and more easygoing. It's a pretty rare feature to see on a vehicle that's not fully electric, and if you happen to be offended by new ways of doing things, you can just turn it off with a button press here. By the way, three more buttons down on the other side. Hybrid, which calls the shots on its own. Electric, which uses your stored battery powered now. And e-save, which uses fuel now and saves battery drive for later. And in this way, drivers can control when and how the system uses their roughly 40 kilometers worth of stored battery power. On chilly mornings, I appreciated the electric cabin heat which runs off the 12 volt system and works in combination with fiery hot heated seats and a toasty heated steering wheel to provide plenty of warmth almost right away without burning gas to heat the cabin, which is the case for some plug-in hybrid models. An electric cabin heater in a vehicle like this means saving fuel and a quieter and more authentic electric driving experience even in the cold. So with nearly one pedal driving and that smooth and quiet powertrain, it's an extra helping of convenience and refinement coming alongside a reduced fuel bill and the fairly uncommon experience of world-famous off-road talent from a plug-in hybrid vehicle. Not to mention an exciting new experience and tech to take in from the Jeep Wrangler, which by the way is exactly what the folks writing the checks for these things are after. All of that while the Wrangler's latest displays and graphics, including hybrid-specific modifications to the layout of both the digital and analog parts of the dash, as well as some exclusive screens and displays in the new central infotainment system, help to engage drivers as they keep an eye on what the hybrid system is up to. Typical Wrangler complaint supply, the highway ride has generous wind noise levels and while significantly improved versus earlier generations, highway cruising in this machine is more labor intensive and much noisier than your average family crossover. Not to mention that my tester's ask of about 73,000 Canadian dollars is a good reminder of the cost to entry of running one of the most popular 4x4s on the road with a new technology that a lot of shoppers are getting very curious about. And 
here's a look at what to expect on a nighttime drive. Good power and spread from the low beams. The main benefit I enjoyed after a few evening drives was the color of the lighting. I found it to be clean, white, and vivid, helping to reduce eye strain, and also, the automatic high beam system is on the ball and required very little manual intervention on divided highways. Still, I did leave my tester wishing for a little more peripheral lighting from the high beams to the tree lines and culverts beside the highway, and maybe a touch more reach far up the road for those nighttime drives through Moose Country, and if you appreciate this little glimpse into what to expect from the Wrangler's lighting system after dark, then leave me a like and consider subscribing if you're watching on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.